first honey cut. Red shirt, 184 yeah. pounds, man. Looking big, looking big. You eating a lot yeah. of Wheaties? No, nah, a lot of pasta. A lot of pasta? Lot of pasta and Lucky Charms. All right, when we see you come back, when you come back, will you be 184 again? Yes. Is the career going to be 184? Yes, always. Always? Sure, but sure. Unless I gain like 50 pounds, it's going to be 84. All right, uh, I keep calling you the pseudo number one guy in the country. Okay, you have had a, an amazing uh, red shirt year. Okay, you've gotten almost 40 matches in. Yeah. Okay, taking on all comers, actually beating uh, number four Kilgore in the uh, Southern Scuffle Finals. Quite the rivalry, too. I'll come back to that. You guys yeah. are two and two. But, you know, what's the mentality been this year in the red shirt year for you? Uh, well, obviously, just to um, sharpen up my shots, score more points, push, push the match. Uh, I mean, yeah, I want to win every match, but more or less, I just want to. I want to go out there and just go real hard. And I mean, it's easier with the pressures off now. I mean, red shirt here, if you lose a match, it's, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It gives you something to look at and get better at. And you don't have to worry about the rankings. I mean, I'm not in the rankings. So all I do is go out there and I want to just smash and hammer everyone I can. And it's more fun. I mean, it brought more fun back to wrestling. There's no pressure of competing. I'm not a younger guy anymore. I'm starting to be one of the upperclassmen in the in the country, so it's time to put a beating on some people. All right, do you think the coaches can trick you and lie to you next year and maybe tell you you're redshirting again and then you just go out and crush everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they can convince me that I'm, I'm putting on a different singlet than the Edinburgh one, but I'm, I'm looking forward to putting that Edinburgh singlet back on. I feel like this redshirt year has definitely shown me that I am more than capable of winning nationals with, I mean, not even getting lucky. I, I could just do it out and just just talent and work. Okay. Uh, does the LeBlanc uh, round of 12 match stick with you every day? Uh, yeah. I beat him pretty bad at the Reno Finals. I'm, uh, I, I thought I had that one. I mean, I, warm, I thought I had, that, I had that one. I mean, I warmed up like I do for every other match. But I think just mentally, I, after I beat Kilgore the round before that, I, I felt like it was almost like it was in the bag. And everyone kept congratulating me before the match was even started. So I... I take it for granted that I didn't get my mind more into it. I mean, obviously I tried. I knew I didn't have it yet. Everyone at Nationals, especially in the in that round, in the Consies, it's, it's All-American or don't All-American. It's sorry or good job. And it, 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 it's, a very, it's a very big round. I mean, that's where pretty much dreams are either made or lost in the sense of becoming an All-American. So... Yeah, I think about it just about every time I see anything that's to do with Wyoming. So that, so that burns in your belly, huh? That definitely gives me a lot more drive to not only be better than everyone, but good enough to where the points shouldn't matter. I should, I should have more points than put, to put it in any ref's hands, to put it in a, no matter what the ref is, if, he's real, if he doesn't like me or if he, does, if he favors the other person, even though they're not biased. But I try not. I try to put it at all in my hands and leave no doubt. Leave no doubt to where there's there's no question that I should have got to take down or I shouldn't got to take down. I should already have the points. Okay. Cushion. Cushion. Yes. A lot of cushion. All right. Uh, two and two. Back to the Kilgore rivalry. I mean, you said yep. second grade. Second grade. Second or third grade. We actually started drilling together uh, at a, the Bria Recreational. It's from the Bria Rec in Ohio. We were in a, the club group together, and his dad and my dad would take turns. We'd drive to like Pennsylvania or around Ohio. We'd take turns going to open tournaments together. We were, we were in the wrestling at like right, Rome. I mean, we're we're good friends. We really don't hang out outside of wrestling, but we're pretty good buddies. And we're still I'm still waiting to play Nazi zombies with him on Call of Duty. <laughs> he just gave me his uh, his uh, PS3 name, so hopefully we can get some kill some zombies. Even after he judo throws you and you still end up beating him in the match? Uh, he got the one right there. There's seven seconds left and the only thing that can go through my mind is I'm not giving up any points right now because I knew he was going to stand up real fast. I knew he was going to try to get that point. I'm just like, there's no way he's getting points. So when he stood up, I tried to come out in front of him and I was just going to lift him up and kind of just wait for the time to run out or I mean, I, the, like, as if I was going to do a Turk. 
but he just reached around and I just got thrown right to my back and it was pretty sweet. Did I it wake you up? Yeah, I mean, oh, it definitely woke me up. I was just like, why did you give up too? I wasn't gonna give up any. I should just let him go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, that that definitely woke me up for the match, and I, I uh, after that, I was a little more cautious on how I how I wrestled that match, and then he actually threw me at the beginning of the next period too with the same move except he didn't get the reversal, but it came close. So, it's the last time I tried to go in the front and Turk Dustin so you, Kilgore. So you guys are pretty, you're actually friendly guys. Like you don't hate him, you're your friend. Oh no, yeah, I mean, we're, we're enemies about the, uh, well, Scuffle's a two day tournament. I talked to him the first day, we were friends. And I uh, wish, wished him good luck before the day was over, because I was like, I'm probably not gonna talk to you that much tomorrow, because we were gonna wrestle in the finals most likely. And, we didn't talk until after the finals, so. Was it cool again? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was obviously there's that there's a little bit of that that um, that rivalry still there just because we just got done wrestling. But I mean, I went up and I talked to him for a little bit, and he uh, went over and gave my mom a hug. I mean, his I'm friends with his family, he's friends with mine. So right. we're our brother used to hunt with his dad and all. So okay. I mean, it's not real tight, but we definitely have connections more than just wrestling. All right, how many more opens for you? Just the Edinburgh Open? Edinburgh Open and Clarion Open, open and then that'll, if I get five and five, that'll put me at 48 and one. And then uh, freestyle, Look, I want to make a name for myself in freestyle this year. All right, so, you got anything else for me, man? Nah, just not much. It's always it's good just, to talk. Just, yeah. How, how do you do, you can't do your backflips in here, can you? I could probably do a back loop in here. I don't want to see it. No, I don't want to see, don't see it. No, 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 no. But you can't. can't you can do them in here. Well, I, I, I'm Once you kick the go ceiling in between one of these pillars here. I've done them before. I'm, they haven't done it in a while. But <laughs> all right. I'll, listen, we'll do it in the gym next time I see you. Okay, definitely. All right. Hey, thanks for the time. Good luck, and hopefully we can see 48 and one. Yeah, that, that's a good number. Which was 48 no though. But yeah. Uh, hey, it happens. Next year will be a 48 no if I can get that many wins. All right. Hey, thanks for the time. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of the redshirt year, all right? Definitely.